Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we're going to keep building our tic-tac-toe game. Now, in the last video, we showed you how to create a new C-sharp script, which is our game controller script, and we were able to add some variables to that script, as well as a function that we're using to set up our game. In this video, we want to keep building on to our game controller script, and we're going to create a new public function that we're going to pair with all the buttons in our tic-tac-toe grid. So let's get started. So here we have our tic-tac-toe game open inside of Unity, and the first thing I'm gonna do is hit play so that we can see how our game works so far. And so when I hit play, there's not much that happens. You can see that all the nine buttons inside our tic-tac-toe grid are interactable because when I hover over them, you can see that they highlight and right now nothing happens when we click these buttons and that's what we're going to be doing today. The other thing that we can notice from our game controller script is that it's showing us whose turn it is. So right here we have this dot above the X player, but we don't have a dot above the O player. This is actually being controlled by the game controller script and that on the start function, it's setting this dot above the X player to be active and it's setting the dot above the O player to be inactive. So it looks like everything's working properly. Now the next thing that we're going to do is open our game controller script inside of Visual Studios. Once you have your script open in Visual Studios, the first thing that we're going to do is create a new public function. And so I'm gonna scroll down below the update function and I'm going to type public void and then this can be our tick tack toe button. Now we're going to add parentheses and inside the parentheses we need to add a parameter. And so this is just going to be an int parameter and we can call it which number. Now this parameter is going to specify which of the nine buttons in our grid was clicked. Now outside our parentheses we're going to add curly braces. Now there's a lot of code that needs to go into this function and it's actually too much for one video. So we're going to split this function up into a few different videos. And for this first video, what we want to do is add all the code that we need to control all the visual aspects of our tic-tac-toe game. And the first visual aspect that I can think of is to mark the cell of the tic-tac-toe grid with an X or an O depending on whose turn it is. Now in the last video, we created these variables, and of these variables, the ones that we're going to use for this first part are the whose turn variable, the player icons, and the tic-tac-toe spaces. And so I'm going to scroll down, and the first thing that we need to do is access the button that was clicked. And so that is the tic-tac-toe spaces, because it's a type button. And so I'm going to type tic-tac-toe spaces, and then we're going to access the element of this array based on which number was passed in to this function. We then need to access the image component. So I'm going to say dot image and then the sprite of the image component. So dot sprite. So now that we've accessed the sprite image of this button, we can then go ahead and set it equal to the sprite image of whoever's turn it is. So if it's the X player's turn, we can set it equal to the X icon. And if it's the O player's turn, we can set it equal to the O icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it equal to, and then we are going to use this player icons variable because this is of type sprite and it's an array where we're going to have two elements. The first is going to be the X icon and the second is going to be the O icon. Now I actually typed Y icon and that was just a little mistake from the last video because I'm so used to X's and Y's that I meant an O but I said a Y and typed a Y. So just changed it to O icon and so we're going to access that player icon variable. Player icons variable. Now inside square brackets we need to access which player's icon of whoever's turn it is. And so we're going to use the whose turn integer variable to specify which one has clicked the button, whether it's the X player or the O player. Now the next thing that we want to do is make it so that the button that was clicked can't be clicked again. And so to do this we want to access the button that was clicked and so we're going to use our tic-tac-toe spaces variable and then in square brackets we're going to type which 
number because that specifies which button was clicked. And then all we have to do is access the interactable variable and set it equal to false. Now there's a little bit more that we're going to add to this function in the next video. And so I'm going to leave a little bit of space for that. But the last thing that we want to do for this video is change whose turn it is. And so I'm going to just use a simple if statement. And I'm going to check to see if whose turn is equal to zero. So if it's the X player's turn and we've clicked a button, then we want to change whose turn and set it equal to the O player's turn, which is one. We can then add an else statement. And inside this else statement, we're going to set whose turn equal to zero. And so if whose turn is equal to zero, then we set it equal to one. And if whose turn does not equal zero, meaning if it equals one or if it equals anything else, which it shouldn't ever equal anything other than zero and one, but in case it does, we're then going to change it to zero, meaning that it's the X player's turn. Now let's go ahead and save this script and then go back to Unity. Once inside Unity, we're gonna go ahead and expand our canvas and our grid game object. We're then going to select all the buttons that are underneath our grid game object. These are the tic-tac-toe spaces that we've set in our game controller script, but we need to add a function to the on-click option. So I'm gonna click this plus button with all the buttons selected, and then I'm going to select our game controller script and drag it into the none object field. Now we can see that the game controller game object is attached to all the on clicks of the different buttons that we have. Now I'm going to reselect all our buttons again and then use this drop down menu and the on click option that currently says no function. I'm going to go to game controller because that's our game controller script and then I'm going to find our tic tac toe button function and you can see that it has an int parameter. Now what we need to do is select each of these buttons one at a time and then change this parameter field that has appeared to the value of this button, the currently selected button inside the tic-tac-toe spaces array. And so the top left is zero, the top middle is one, the top right is two, middle left three, middle middle four, middle right is five, bottom left is six, bottom middle is seven, and bottom right is eight. And to double check, I'm gonna select our game controller game object, and here in our tic-tac-toe spaces array, you can see that it is top left, top middle, top right, middle left, middle middle, middle right, bottom left, bottom middle, bottom right, which is the same order as these game objects and the same order that we numbered them. Now that we've paired our tic-tac-toe button function to all our different buttons, we can go ahead and hit the play button. I'm also going to select our game controller script in the hierarchy so that we can see values change in the inspector. Now as I click any of these buttons in the game view, the first thing that you'll be able to see is that it is marked with the icon of whoever's turn it is, the second thing that we'll see in the inspector is that whose turn, the whose turn variable, will change from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. So let's try it out. So I'm going to click here, and you can see that it's marked with an X, and the whose turn variable now says 1. And if I click again, it's marked with an O, and the whose turn variable is turned back to 0. And so it seems like everything is working properly. Now there's one more thing that we want to add to our script, and that is to display whose turn it is. So right now when we start the game, it'll always show that it's X player's turn, even if we've clicked and it's then the O player's turn. And so let's go back to our script real quick in Visual Studios. Once back inside Visual Studios, the variable that we're going to be using is the turn icons variable to display whose turn it is. Now, this is of type game object, and it's an array with two elements in it. The first is the dot that's found above the X player's scoreboard, and the second element is the dot found above the O player's scoreboard. Now, in our game setup function, we can see that we're setting the first element to active by saying set active to true, 
and we're setting the second element to false. And so we're going to use these two lines of code. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste these two lines inside the if statement and the else if statement that we created. So the if whose turn equals zero, I'm going to paste that in there and the else I'm going to paste that in there. And so what we want to do with these two lines inside the if statement is change which one is being set to true and which one is being set to false. And so the first element or the zeroth element we're going to set to false and the second or first element is going to be set to true. So now we can go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity where we're going to test our game one more time. So I'm going to hit the play button. Now right off the bat we don't see anything that's different but when I click one of the buttons in our tic-tac-toe grid you can see that we've now marked that grid with the X but the dot above the X scoreboard has turned off and the dot above the O scoreboard has turned on. So that's pretty cool. The players can now see whose turn it is. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is save our scene. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. We were able to create our tic-tac-toe button function and that function now shows all the visual aspects of playing tic-tac-toe. So when a player clicks one of the squares, it marks that square with their icon, and then it changes the display of whose turn it is. Now I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense in this video. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we release new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.